गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर वेलकम टू दिस डेमोस्ट्रेशन पार्ट गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून राजा था so shall we start <clears throat> how many students we have we have okay we can start perhaps so that everyone's time is saved and so all right then let's start on. yeah 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 okay so before starting to this demonstration i will uh, would like to introduce all about the speaker of today for this machine learning and data science uh, mr rahul singh he is a uh, mtech with uh, specialization in this artificial intelligence he has almost about 12 plus years of experience in data mining and data science machine learning he handling the data from the variety of the domain including the retail sector uh, it sector pharma sector healthcare sector finance sector and uh, he is working very closely in this uh, data science profiles and uh, machine learning so he will be uh, give you a some uh, live demonstration on this machine learning concept so uh, i welcome to mr rahul singh to start up this program and give us some good learning sessions about this machine learning and data science thank you rajesh ji for the quick intro and thank you kamal sir for this opportunity so let's start with the session so uh, i'd like to quickly uh, tell you about you know what actually machine learning is and uh, you might be aware of uh, machine learning and data science it, it's a very hot topic uh, and uh, since last 2 3 years it has uh, you know uh, uh, it's on an exponential growth right now and everybody is talking about it everybody is you can hear it everywhere machine learning data science ai so what exactly is ai what exactly is machine learning and what is data science how do they all these fields differ from each other so what artificial intelligence is that ai is a very generic field it's uh, it started some 30 40 uh, years ago with the aim of you know introducing human level intelligence in machines and robots and uh, since last 10 or 15 years or so uh, we have seen rise in machine learning uh, that that happened because you know there was a sudden surge of huge amount of data with people writing lots of comments on facebook and sharing their photos on twitter and facebook and instagram and you know uh, youtube people are writing comments and amazon with the rise of e-commerce we have people buying lots of stuff billions of transactions happening every day right so with the rise of data there was a challenge which came uh, to how to organize this data so data organization was easier you can just store the data you can manage the data with uh, database dbms and mysql but how to make sense of this data how to make some intelligent uh, you know conclusion from this data this is a gold mine sitting right there in front of you billions of transactions billion of people talking to each other billions of people you know uh, billions of health records but you, we haven't been doing anything since last 15 years or so right so with the advent of machine learning and with the advent of data and with the advent of cheaper uh, systems or graphics cards or compu computational power ram cpu right so it was easier to do this cal these calculations these heavy calculations so machine learning ai and data science relies heavily on mathematical calculations so on the 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 benefit of the gpu or the graphics card was that you could perform lots of mathematical computations and you know vector calculations uh, matrix algebra very easily on the graphics card so this was about you know machine learning ai and data science so machine learning is you know basically application based ai it is more of you know how to apply the knowledge from ai to day to day field right and data science is more of you know combining all these uh, knowledge from ai and machine learning to solve problems specific to a particular domain with the domain knowledge if you combine the domain knowledge of healthcare to machine learning and ai you come up with a certain solution if you combine the knowledge of domain knowledge of you know uh, insurance or banking with machine learning and ai you come with certain products right so ai you can see is a is a super set and machine learning and data science are the smaller subsets of the ai field so ai is a super set the aim of ai is to 
develop machines which are you know on par with human level intelligence that is the main aim of it but uh, machine learning and data science are solving the smaller problems in subsets like you know uh, if somebody is uh, buying certain books or recommending him some certain other book or some recommending somebody some movies right if he was watch certain type of movies if you go on amazon you buy certain products then what other products you might like so this is a very small problem right but the larger problem is the larger uh, challenge is ai so ai is a very huge problem we are building small small we are solving small small problems with the help of machine learning and data science and we aim to achieve we aim to arrive with uh, arrive to a level of human level intelligence for the robots someday this might happen in the future but not right now so uh, i'll quickly also tell you about you know industry application so uh, i've worked in you know lots of industries various industries like i've worked in travel hospitality pharmaceutical insurance and uh, you know biotechnology sector also and all these fields uh, right now need data scientists heavily because these people have you know huge amount of data lying with them and nobody is making any conclusion or nobody is you know making any uh, anything any sort of you know uh, prediction out of it like you know if we have billions of uh, healthcare records then how do i use it to you know predict a certain disease predict cancer predict diabetes right so uh, i would say that you know uh, data science and machine learning will be the new programming of in the coming years so we had you know java the age of java we had the age of c c++ prior to that right and html and all that stuff but now because there are huge uh, there is a huge amount of data and there is, there is a dearth of good um, good data scientist there is uh, you know uh, it's really difficult to find a good data scientist in the market right now because you have to combine your knowledge from programming mathematics statistics and you know you have to be a domain expert also you have to talk to everyone so you have to gather the information make sense out of it and slice and dice the data right so uh, with that i would like to say that there, there is a huge uh, dearth of data scientists right now in the market we really need some good data scientists lot of them thousands of them lakhs of them so uh, let's start with the presentation today and i'll quickly you know uh, uh, give you a sense of you know lots of people i've heard lots of student i've heard saying that you know machine learning is difficult because it involves mathematics lots of mathematics how will we be able to understand these maths we don't have prior knowledge of mathematics statistics we are from biology background we are from pharma background or we never took seriously our mathematics class so it's all right it doesn't matter you know i'll in this course we'll be uh, taking examples from day to day life very generic examples and try to correlate them with the mathematical equations and the understanding we'll start with very generic stuff and then build up upon them the mathematical foundation and the probabilistic and statistical foundation so it will be really very easy you have to just hold with me. get hello so yeah what is machine learning this is uh, dilbert um, few of you i mean might be aware of this guy so he's saying that based on your internet history you might be dumb enough to enjoy extreme sports so the computer is talking to him talking to dilbert click here to buy a ticket to base jump from internet international space station so this guy says i think in, the internet is trying to kill me we call it machine learning so you know uh, machine learning sometimes becomes really funny you have to uh, really be cautious what you are trying to do and what you are trying to suggest so again the expectation with data scientists is really you know uh, awkward in the market so if you go uh, hunting for job or for interview there are a lot of people who still don't understand machine learning and mix with mix machine learning or data science with you know normal mysql or database dbms so as you can see in this uh, cartoon what this guy comes over to this uh, data scientist and says that when a user takes a photo the app should check whether they are in national park or not then this girl or the data scientist says yeah it's easy give me a few hours 
and then he request again and check whether the photo is of a bird then the question is then then the then she answers that i'll need a research team and five years so you can see it, it's really difficult even to explain people from cs background that how difficult uh, machine learning or data science is because when you ask an additional question so the amount of data which is required to answer that question becomes rises exponentially so that that is when you know machine learning becomes very difficult so uh, there are two major parts of machine learning that i'll quickly skim over these are supervised and unsupervised machine learning so supervised machine learning is as the name says that defines that it's like you know uh, machine learning under my supervision or under your supervision or under the supervision of the data scientist who is building it so uh, it's like you know uh, when a kid makes a mistake and he learns from the mistake like you know uh, i'll just explain it better with this example it will be better to explain with this example so you learn from your experiences i tell the machine i give the machine some uh, training data so the training data is let's say you know if the machine has to differentiate between photographs of apples and oranges so i tell the machine that these 100 photographs are of apple i put them in a folder and label these as apple apple dot jpg1 apple dot uh, apple 2 dot jpg right and in another separate folder which is uh, which i name as oranges i put 100 images of oranges then i train the machine then i ask train the machine on these images these two images and i keep 20 percent of the data hidden from the machine and on these 20% of the data, I will be testing the machine's accuracy. So let's say if the machine builds up some model of apples and oranges, it, it, the machine thinks that you know apples are reddish in color and oranges, oranges in color and more circular than apple. So this is a mathematical formula for apple or oranges. So let's say if a new data or new picture comes in and machine has to predict whether, whether it's an apple or orange. So machine gives me a prediction so let's say i share the picture which is of orange but machine fails and it says that the picture is of an apple so the machine has failed here so what i'll do is that i will be deducting certain marks or you know reducing certain uh, marks from this algorithm so the machine will know that it failed on this particular image it will go back i'll retrain the algorithm i'll tell the machine or the algorithm that you failed on this particular image go back and retrain yourself so i'll be retraining the algorithm so i'll be checking again with the same picture and i'll check whether the machine has now learned anything or not so this is how we do with supervised machine learning problems so there is a supervision under the guidance of the human the machine tries to learn and then there is the unsupervised learning case so what happens is that this this is a very really good problem for from you know biology and pharma background so you can see we have tumor size and age so on y axis we have age x axis we have tumors so you can see the red dots these are uh, these clearly signify signify the this that this data is from you know elder people and who have a larger uh, size of tumor but the blue circles are from the younger people and smaller size of the tumor so if i ask you to differentiate between the cancerous and non-cancerous people so the problem is uh, the, the solution is very simple here we'll be simply drawing a straight line between these two data and whichever data falls on the upper side of it is cancerous and if it falls on the lower side of it it's non-cancerous so let's see some uh, generic example some some example from day-to-day -day life suppose you are searching for wired on google but accidentally you type word or wired or you hit some you know random key so if you can see your keyboard right now you can see that nearby w we have keys q a s d and e so what happens is that we accidentally hit you know uh, q uh, a s and e uh, s d and e instead of w so this is this is a probabilistic score that what is the probability of somebody hitting an e rather than w when he wanted to hit uh, sorry rather than y when he wanted to hit w 
so there is a high possibility that you will be hitting e instead of w rather than y or p instead of w because these are far off on the keyboard you got the idea right so after the search so what happens after the search is that you probably realize that you typed it wrong and you'd go back and search for wired a couple of seconds later so you'd go back and edit the search and you would type wired correctly now the, what happens is that the google algorithm recognizes that you search for something a couple of seconds after searching something else and it keeps this in mind for future users who make a similar typing mistake so the google algorithm it will store such search data so you type board but you wanted to type wired right so it will and but but you quickly went back and you edited your search you typed wired again and then you went on with your browsing so google will know that you know you typed something and quickly you edited it means you typed something wrong there's a possibility right so this is machine learning in action as a result google learns to correct it for you so now uh, this is another problem from day to day life how we make decisions right so there is an algorithm called decision tree in machine learning it's a very basic algorithm it's from day to day life the challenges we face in day to day life the decisions that we have to make in day to day life under a certain constraint so what is that constraint and what decisions do we make so let's see this problem so the constraint here is that i have only 100 rupees in my pocket and i have to arrive my home and what all i have to do with that you have got 100 only 100 rupees in your pocket you have to eat your lunch you have to buy a chocolate for your younger brother you have to buy some vegetables you have to then catch a metro then finally catch a bus to back to home what decision will you take what is the what is more important in all these things you have to reach your home and which all things are more on your high priority list buying a chocolate having your lunch you are very hungry or buying some vegetables if you don't buy vegetables there won't be any dinner right but you have to catch the metro also but then again after the metro you have to save some money for a bus also for back home so you see there are lots of decision it's a very simple problem 100 bucks in my pocket and i have to go back to home but if you generate the graph for this simple problem it will be you know a very complex graph if you write down all the decisions but writing down we see that you know oh my god it's so much mathematics oh my god i'm, I'm feeling scared this is mathematics and all but in in our mind we are doing this every day every second every moment whatever calculations we do whatever uh, whenever you are talking to someone when we are whenever you are you are you know making tea whenever you are going outside you are making your decisions based on certain probability certain assumptions and certain and after those assumptions and your probabilities and what you believe you arrive at certain conclusion right so this is how a decision tree works so i'm not explaining the decision tree here i'm just explaining you how you use mathematics in day to day life and it's really very easy and this is how we'll be uh, understanding mathematics uh, in this course also we'll be using some very day to day generic examples and we'll be building our complex foundations of machine learning based on those very generic examples so let's see this very interesting uh, case numbers so we see 9 raised to power 2 or 9 square is 81 all right everybody knows it 9 into 5 is 45 no issues the result now let's observe this closely the result is greater than any of the numbers we multiplied 81 is greater than any of these numbers 45 is greater than 5 and 9 right agreed let's move on to this second example now we have decimals in place right so 0.9 into 0.9 what happens here it's 0.81 0.9 into 0.5 what happens is here here is that it's 0.5 the result is sorry it's smaller than any of the numbers we multiplied so you see putting up a decimal it does something to the numbers does something to the result it makes them smaller with respect to the numbers we multiplied but what is the use of this why am i telling you this i am telling you this the reason behind this is because of the probability probability the the score of probability comes between 0 to 1 right in between 
lies decimal numbers and when you multiply them it reduces as we can see over here that is why probability is expressed between 0 and 1 right and why we want to reduce two multiples of probabilities why we want to have a smaller number when we multiply two probabilities let's see that also no issues so a very basic probability question right given the rain data for the month of july from 2019 right this is the data let's let's suppose that this is a monthly data there are 30 31 days of the for this of this data the first day of july month is tuesday it rained wednesday it rained thursday friday saturday it didn't rain what is the probability it will rain on sunday how many sundays in july so this this is a very uh, simple problem so we have 31 days data how many Sundays are there in July? Let's represent it with NS. So let's suppose that there are four Sundays in July. How many Sundays did it rain in July? Let's represent with this with RS. So let's suppose that on two Sundays it rained out of the four Sundays. So two out of four, which is which is 50%. So there is a 50% probability that it will rain on Sunday. But we can do better. You might agree with me on that, right? Because we have used very simple, basic you know assumptions on this we can also use whether it rained on saturday did it rain on saturday prior to the sunday what was the weather on saturday what did it rain on friday also so with these additional information i can give you a better accuracy or better probability that whether or not it will rain on a given sunday or not conditions it rained today okay fine so let's understand condition probability so i'm not I'm, I'm i'm you know uh i don't want to use the terms condition probability right now but i'm you know uh trying to explain you that what are conditions how we think in our mind about conditional probability but just we just that we have given it a name condition probability and people you know get scared oh my god it's condition probability no it's not scary we are doing it every day every second so let's understand this uh example conditions it rained today let's denote it with r0 okay fine it rained today do you think it will rain tomorrow do you think it will rain tomorrow given that it rained today today is sunday do you think it will rain tomorrow also uh yeah i think there is a high likelihood that it will rain tomorrow also because it rained today also okay then what about day after tomorrow what about tuesday uh i don't think so if you ask me seriously i don't think so that it will rain with high likelihood on tuesday also because you know these are three consecutive days in a row sunday also raining monday also raining tuesday also raining what about wednesday do you think it will rain on the fourth day also consecutively lagatar char din barish hogi kya will it rain is it possible it is very unlikely that it will rain four consecutive days it rained yesterday will it rain today it didn't rain yesterday will it rain today so again my question is that do you think it's possible to rain for an entire week in any given year it's really really unlikely it's it won't be zero or one but it's unlikely it will somewhere be in in between zero and one so you see let's denote this uh r0 as 0.8 or one maybe right then let's denote this Will it rain tomorrow as a probability of 0.8? Let's denote this as based on a previous data 0.7. So if you multiply all this, you will come up with a number which is you know smaller. So you can you see that as we go far further down the week, our probability, our certainty that it will rain on the fourth day or the fifth day or the sixth day or the seventh day of the week reduces. This is why we use decimal numbers and we multiply them because you if you multiply 0.1 see if you multiply 0.8 by 0.8 and again let's try with smaller numbers if you multiply 0.2 by 0.2 it's 0 0.04 and again multiply by 0 0.2 it's 0 0.008 so you see the number is decreasing and so our certainty or our confidence is also decreasing that it will rain on the fourth day or the fifth day or the sixth day so this is conditional probability for you simplified so let's consider this another example the stubborn guy so who is this stubborn guy 
so there is no let's consider a scenario a very small town a hypothetical town ek chhota sa kasba hai let's consider this uh, in this hypo hypothetical town there is a stubborn guy who thinks that there is no food outside noida whatever food there is on the earth is in noida or is in delhi there is no food outside delhi now what happens is that the town faces worst drought of the century but the stubborn guy has 100% firm belief that there is no food outside this town what happens is that the stubborn guy extincts was he really human at all is what my question is because a probability of 100% or a probability of zero is unlikely in human systems or living systems you cannot say with 100% probability that this thing will happen or with a zero with a 100% prob probability that this certain thing will not occur at all there might be red tigers or red lions in the universe who knows have you seen all the lions or the tigers in the universe we have seen only on the uh, only on the planet earth right there could be a civilization outside the planet earth and there there might be a lion which is red in color so you see the probability of a red lion is never zero there is a likelihood that a red lion still exists so the probability so with this comes this philosophical aspect that to us is human the probability of exact zero is not supported in living systems let's see this visual representation of a recommender system so recommender system what a recommender system is that you people might have seen you know on amazon or flipkart that when you uh, buy some product or when you buy, browse certain products it says that people with similar habits bought bought this product or people who bought this book bought that book also or people who loved this certain movie loved that movie also how does this recommender system work in amazon or flipkart or netflix let's consider this very small example let's say we have data three users that let's, let's say we have three users on netflix or amazon and these three users are amit gaurav and sumit and we have only two movies right now these people have rated these two movies these two serials amit has rated 5 out of 5 for both the serials gaurav has rated 2 for got and 5 for breaking bad sumit has rated 1 for got and 4 for breaking bad if we plot this data the first thing we do in machine learning and data science is we simply plot the data from there we get the intuition it becomes the picture becomes very clear what what is happening what we want to do how we want to slice and dice the data so amit you can see has rated 5 out of 5 on both the serial so bb it's 5 and got is 5 amit lies here gorav lies here sumit lies here all right no rocket science very simple plotting now let's say this x guy an unknown guy logs into netflix and he rates breaking bad as 2 and game of thrones as 4 then i ask you the question that who is the nearest neighbor of this particular x guy is he amit gorav or sumit now that we have plotted the data we can easily see that whoever is this nearest to this x and we if we are able to calculate this distance then we'll be able to mathematically represent who is nearest to x and he is the nearest neighbor of x so let's calculate the distance you see it is 1 over here distance is 1 and this distance is 3 so what we are doing is we are calculating taxi cab distance so how taxis travel in you know subways or in streets of new york based on that this taxi cab algorithm was devised so 1 and 3 is 4 so distance of x from amit is 4 units what is the distance of x from gorab it is 2 and 3 it is 5 so gorab is very far, far from x he is not related that you know nearly to x this particular guy and what about sumit so sumit again is distant too distant it is 5 units further away from this x guy so we can see that uh, amit is very near to this new guy so we will recommend whatever amit has bought in his history we will recommend this all those stuff to this particular new user right so this is how a very basic uh, recommender system works very basic recommender system works this is the mathematics behind a very basic recommender system you can build it on your right now on your system you just have to have this ratings data 
from user and you can plot the data and you can simply calculate the distances and whenever a new particular user logs in you can suggest him based on some uh, you know uh, some partial history of his purchase or likings that you know oh my god uh, i think you you might love this particular book or you might love this uh, particular movie based on your you know purchase history or your views now let's understand this linear separator again i'm trying to explain you everything visually you don't have to you know go into mathematics or you don't have to write any equations you simply plot all these things and you can understand the machine learning algorithms or the mathematics of machine learning and probability very very easily don't have to write or use any equations at all so let's say we have uh, this problem of you know uh, differentiating between certain images so given black and white images will you be able to differentiate these are certain fruits i'm just telling you that these are certain fruits and this is a certain another fruit but both of them are circular and both of them images are black and white how will you differentiate to me all these four you know fruits like look equally uh, you know similar because they are black and white they are circular how will i differentiate so i'll go back to the person who asked me to build this model i'll ask him listen man this uh, data that you have given me is black and white i need some extra information why don't you just give me some you know colored pictures that will give me some extra dimension or information right so you see dimension when we use dimension in machine learning is it means that we are talking about extra information so it's you know no rocket science all these things just just that these people have you know uh, using some you know uh, jargons technical jargons it makes uh, people think that you know we are talking some high level stuff but it's really really basic so the only information available is shape both are almost similar and both are black and white images now we need some extra information so let's say the guy or the questionnaire or uh, the 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 person who want me to uh, solve this uh, problem or wants me to predict which fruits are these gave me colored pictures oh so now i can see that these two red uh, these two are red colors and these two are orange colored let's plot this in a very basic uh, so fruit one is circular shape is circular color is reddish fruit two again it's circular and color is orangish so what do you think will be an intelligent approach to differentiate between these two objects it's very common sense that color is the best approach color is the best dimension color is the best information to differentiate between these two shapes because shape both are circular how will i differentiate based on shape right so that dimension or that information is of no use for me the color information or the color dimension is of very much use for me right now because i can clearly see that the images or the balls or the objects on the right side are orangish and the objects on the left side are red let's plot this again all right so this x axis is orange and red so zero means orange and one means red or as you go further up the x axis you can see y axis sorry you can see reddish color is there and on the x axis we have shape so the more you go further down the axis you see the objects get circular so you you can see easily that all the apples or all the red objects will be or let's say apples will be lying over here so some of them will be more circular some apples are you know less circular and oranges also oranges will also be circular but then they will be orange in color so they will be downward near to the x axis very intuitive very much common sense right so if what if i ask you to differentiate what if i ask you to draw a line which differentiates between these two objects so there are three lines i've given you there is a gray line there is a blue line and there is a green line so which line do you think intuitively is the best differentiator between these two objects this is simple machine learning we are doing right here it's very intuitive to see that the blue line is the best line to differentiate between orange and apple because from the apples also the blue line is very far off from the oranges also it's very far off it's clearly differentiating clearly demarcating between these two objects but if you see the gray line gray line is very very near to the apples and very far from the oranges that's fine but what happens if a new apple arrives and it's you know uh, it falls below the gray line 
then it will be classified as orange with orange which is wrong which is a wrong answer again with the green line you can see green line is very very near to the oranges it is very far from apples which is a good thing but then there is no shock absorption ability in this green line when i say that i mean is that what i mean is that suppose a new orange comes and it crosses the line by chance you know, and then it will be getting classified as apple which is a wrong answer so you can see blue line is the best line it has high shock absorption capability that even if you know a red guy or red apple comes in or, a, or an orange uh, comes in which is uh, you know slightly reddish in color it will again be classified in orange basic sentiment analysis so we hear we hear every day about you know twitter sentiment analysis comments and on facebook and you know people writing comments on uh, during uh, elections we hear a lot that you know for trump who is you know writing what what is the sentiment of public for trump and hillary or let's say modi or you no know, uh, rahul gandhi or whoever right so what happens is that uh, a very basic sentiment analysis if if i ask you to build a very basic sentiment analysis what will you do if i say that movie is really bad so we'll say that you know what whenever somebody uses word bad means the uh, comment is negative he doesn't like the movie but hold on there is a caveat what if i say the movie or the actor was really bad as so when i say bad as it means it's a slang for you know something really good so your algorithm which was very basic will fail here it will say that it, this is a negative comment but it's not so you see you have to build intelligence you have to build up intelligence like that you know to arrive to a uh, to build up a sentiment analysis that is really intelligent so what i gave you an example it was a for very basic sentiment analysis so what we do is that so let's say we have a training corpus of twitter messages and 500 our positive reviews and 500 negative somebody labeled it for us so don't worry about it somebody labeled the twitter comments as positive and negative so what is the probability that out of these 1000 comments a comment will be of a positive or negative it's very easy because 50% are positive and 50% are negative so what i'll do is now is that i'll plot this for all the words used in 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 the all these 1000 comments let's say uh 678 words were used in uh, one in these all in all these thousand comments by people i'll plot all those 678 words over here and then i will plot in this second column what is the probability of that word being used when the sentiment was positive so let's say what is the probability of word am being used when the sentiment was positive this is a very simple conditional probability this term over here you see that p word over like what is the probability of that word being used given the sentiment was positive right and in the third column you can see what is the probability of that word being used given the sentiment was negative so very simple plot then we'll arrive with this with the calculation let's say somebody some new user comes in and he types this comment i am stunned by the high power gravity gravity is a movie starring george clooney so let's say somebody types in that i am stunned by the high power gravity what is the probability that this sentence is positive this comment is probably positive or negative we'll simply compute it we'll compute it using simply these probability conditional probability scores first of all let's say calculate the score of positive of this comment this comment i am stunned by gravity being positive what is the likelihood we'll type probability of it being like or a positive comment which is 0.5 over here you can see probability of i given the comment was positive probability of am given the uh, comment was positive probability of stunned given the comment was positive uh, we will multiply all these probabilities then for the negative similarly we'll follow the same approach probability of dislike it's again 50% so probability of i being used when somebody disliked somebody the comment was negative probability of using saying am when the comment was negative probability of saying stunned when the comment was negative so you see this is the moment of truth probability of stunned given dislike 
you see the probability of stunt given dislike will be very very low right so this is how it will change our probability score so the probabilities when you multiply these probabilities we see that for the like we have forget the decimal it will be very very smaller number as i told you in the previous slides when you multiply decimals you'll arrive at very very smaller numbers right so it will in the chain probabilities we arrive at very very smaller numbers so you see that it's point zero 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 six double two and dislike is four seven two zero it is higher so you can see that this will be a negative comment because dislike the probability of dislike is more so probability of dislike is larger than like so it will be classified as a dislike to you so you see we are using very simple mathematical foundations class 10th mathematics and we are able to and we have been able to understand linear regression we have been able to understand k-means we have been able to understand classification we will able to understand decision tree right let's look at this image now what's with the image how do we classify the images let's say the question is about classification between an image of dog or cat so you see let's look at the image first let's forget about the mathematics forget about machine learning forget about ai when we look at the image what we see we see that the snout of the dog is far from his eye but the snout or nose of the cat is near to his her his or her eye right so this is one concept that we can find so you know this is how we are able to day to day we are able to differentiate between things and objects but we have been it's so much you know ingrained in our brain that we don't think about it mathematically it's so much ingrained in our brain it says it has become so much you know uh, commonplace that we don't think that we are doing any mathematical calculations right like you know when when we are learning car we are struggling we struggle so much when we are learning something but when we are when we become expert at it we don't think about you know the technicalities of it so this is how this is one feature or one thing that on based on which we can differentiate between cats and dogs similarly we can see that the ear of the cat is you know straight up while that of the dog is straight down so these are certain you know small small features or you know uh, things or you know uh, dimensions based on which we can differentiate between dog and cat so this is how machine learning or cnn convoluted neural networks work just we have just given it a name convoluted neural network and people get scared so we'll learn about it in in our class also that how cnn works or how we differentiate between two images now let's uh, quickly so we have we don't have much time i'll just quickly skim over the slides we don't have yeah all right we have only five slides left compression distance so it's a very generic algorithm we do everybody has a compressor on his, in his or her machine or system we use winzip winrar we compress files we send it to people we share it on email right so what is compression distance then so i'll give you a very small example you just have to remember this you can take a snapshot of this sli slide and you can practice this you can just write no worries right just write your name in a text file copy paste it 20 times and without any spaces just copy paste your names 20 times right don't use any spaces save it as name.txt let's say my name is rahul i will just copy type rahul in a certain text file and just copy and paste it 20 times without any spaces and count the characters in, in this file in notepad you can see it shows you characters also or you can simply count the characters right now pretend to be a monkey and hit random keys on your keyboard and make sure that you have same number of characters as in name.txt now open a, another text file and hit random keystrokes let's say in name.txt you had you know 125 characters so similarly in random.txt you have to type 125 random characters and pretend to be a monkey just hit all the random keys on your keyboard now save this file as random.txt now what is the file size of both click on the properties and write down the file size of both these files it will be in bytes right then again use a compressor winzip or winrar whatever you have and compress both these files now again measure the file size of the compressed files what do you think will happen to the files before compression and after compression what will happen to the size 
Now remember, all the these random.txt and name.txt had same amount of characters, 187 in both of them, or whatever number, whatever length your name might be, right? Based on that, they had same number of characters. But then, what will happen after compressing them? One had random keystrokes, one had ordered keystrokes. What we do you think will happen after compression? Right? Just think about it. You have to do it yourself. Corona infection. Let's do this now. Right? Dimension reduction. So there is a very technical term. And oh my God, n number of dimension. There are n number of dimension is machine learning. This data is n number of dimension. How do I deal with n number of dimension? How do I even think in my mind about n number of dimensions? Bloody, I cannot even you know imagine beyond three dimensions. What is four dimension, five dimension, right? In machine learning, people just throw these terms like you know anything like it's you know uh, very naive it's very uh, commonplace right so corona corona infection let's say somebody gives you this plot it's a very unrealistic plot why i'll tell you that day one what happens is that on the very first day there are five number of people who are infected with corona second day there are six number third day there are seven fourth day there is there are eight people fifth day there are nine people so you can see it's an unrealistic plot because it is a linear plot. And let's say we have on the thousandth day, it will have you know 1,005 people infected. On the millionth day, it will have 1 million people. On the 700,000th uh, day or the, uh, you know, as you go on, it will just keep on increasing till the last people get, till the last people on the earth get infected gets infected with corona and dies so everybody will just vanish but in reality it's not it doesn't happen you see what i told you probability of zero and one is not possible in real life or living system else you know humans would have been wiped out or a particular species would have been wiped out entirely from the face of earth right but the probability of zero or one or the probability of a certain infection or disease just going on just like that keep it, it it won't just you know keep on increasing linearly there is an exponential decay after a certain level of time it levels off you can see there are lots of people showing in news and media that you know the plot just it levels off it rises and then it you know tapers off and then it falls off the number of people infected will reduce so let's plot this uh, data you see that's the uh, y is infected people and on x axis we have day First day we have five people, second day we have six, third day we have seven. So you can see if you you know just uh, draw a line, you can see this is a straight line plot. And the line equation of line from your 10th mathematics is I'll just be quick because we don't have much time left now. So line Hello. equation, the equation of line is yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, sir. Yeah, who is it? People uh, yeah. and yeah, please. Yeah, I'll just I'll just quickly finish off just three four slides left. That's it. So the equation of line is y is equal to mx plus c. It's very basic maths again, tenth mathematics. Everybody knows it. If we plot, uh, so using that equation, we can see now. What about the slope? You see, you you ask that m is slope. How do you calculate the slope? Slope is very easy. So you can see the dotted line slope is dy by dx or now we are talking in the terms of differentiation change in y if there is a one unit change in y how much units does is cause to change on the x-axis so there is a one unit change in y seven minus six is one and it causes one unit change in day also so each day there is an increment of one so this is our slope that's it very simple so infected people is called is equal to slope which is one multiplied by day plus four four is the intercept you see c is the intercept so you can see if you plot for the first data you see four and day is zero here so infected people on day zero or sorry the day one or this is a uh, uh, you can see the it starts with four and then as we increase the day it keeps on increasing additional one increasing so you can see we have compressed the data Let's say this corona, corona infection sheet was 1,000 rows long or 1 lakh rows long, right? 
it would have been very difficult to save it but if you use the equation y is equal to mx plus c you have reduced the one lakh row long data to a very single equation and you can just tell anybody that you see corona infection is infected is equal to one times day plus four that's it you don't need to share the data which had one lakh rows or one million rows so you have compressed the data you see what you did there this is how compression works right you you fi you found a pattern and based on that pattern you have compressed the data magical right and very simple mathematics we have used strangers friends relation and correlation now let's say you have a friend uh, you just joined a college in btech and you are making new friends so while we make new friends we are not aware of his or her liking so let's say you have a friend who rates all the movies what what whichever movie he, movies he watch or whatever food he eats he just rates hello, them sir. hello yeah sir chemical mani hai kya sir sorry hello sir chemical yeah, i can hear you yeah yeah hello yeah please everyone uh, unmute your mic because we take your question answer session after this completion of demo session please hold it and write message your query it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. to be over just five minutes just hold with me Ra rakesh rakesh please keep quiet please keep quiet rakesh so strangers friends relation and correlation so let's say you have a friend who is you know very very excited about anything and everything so even if he eats something which he disliked he would say and you ask him oh uh, hey man how was the burger at that certain uh, burger king he would say yeah it was okay and if you ask him to rate it he would say yeah, i would rate it you know four stars out of five and you would be amazed oh my god he's he didn't he, he just disliked the burger he just said it and he's rating it for again you asking for a certain movie he disliked and he would again you know go on saying that you know yeah i would you know rate it four man and the movies he likes he would rate them five so gradually you understand his behavior this is machine learning you are trying to understand when you make friends you will develop this intu intuition that oh my god now i understand this guy whenever he dislikes certain thing he has to rate it four star and when he really likes something it is five star and when he has given a rating of five star then only i should go and watch that movie or then only i should go and eat that food so you see this is correlation you have developed the mathematical model gorov has developed the mathematical model inside his mind and now he understand that when ankit rates a movie four or rates a food four it means one for me right you see the plot here and when he rates five that means five oh my then only i will go and watch that movie when he rates five this is how we make friends when we make friends we understand about them how they are rating certain things so you must you are doing machine learning in your mind every day you see that and this is correlation right in front of you no uh, maths no spooky maths no equation nothing now the faqs i'll handle your faqs i know uh, these might be the questions that you people might have in your mind so why do we need maths for ai and machine learning because we need to you saw that we need to convert all the mathematic all the data into mathematical form be it images be it your voice be it your be your uh, comments on facebook or twitter be your sales record whatever it is we have to convert them into numbers only then we can add multiply them only we, then we can do probabilistic calculations on them right with all the maths and probabilities machine learning difficult no we just saw it it's really easy right you you will agree with me on that front right it's really easy we use 10th mathematics that's it and we learned like you know five or six algorithms in a matter of one hour right how do we understand the mathematics so we'll be sharing so we saw uh, in our course we'll be sharing workbooks and examples from real life to make you understand the mathematics of machine learning very quickly and very easily how to survive in ai now again my methodology of teaching is very different from the conventional teaching methods you might have seen on various online courses on machine learning which are happening in india right now i want to make you independent you don't have to you know rely on somebody to explain you because machine learning is a new field there are lots of research and 
happening each and every day lots of articles been published by yan lekon and the who's who of the machine learning field every day thousands of articles are coming and you have to understand to survive in this field you have to quickly go on and read the articles and understand them and you know use them in your um, model or in your problem and arrive at a better accuracy rather than somebody who is using a very archaic or old method you got the idea right so we'll be uh, not be relying too much on you know conventional textbook we'll be also uh, reading from research articles latest research articles and i'll help you understand the language of research articles because it's uh, you know many a times written written by scientists who use technical jargons and you know obscure uh, uh, vocabulary it's difficult to understand then what's the difference between ai ml and ds i just explained to you in the very beginning how will you learn coding via online sessions okay so i'll be explaining you the coding on these python notebooks that i'll be hosting on my system so you see this will be a python notebook we'll be running the code over here and i'll explain you all the things this is a very simple linear regression introduction right all the course will be there in the github and will be shared with you i'll be explaining these code line by line in the class and it will be shared with you after the class gets over and along with the problem also and you can you know just run this uh, uh, these cells and you know play around with it and try to understand whatever it is and again the question now is, is that newbies aren't entertained on websites like stack or so let's say you are playing around with this code and you have a problem who do you approach so normally what people do is that they uh, search their question on stack overflow but on stack overflow you might have seen that newbies are not entertained much their questions get lost gets lost in the you know floods of question arriving each second every second on the stack overflow so for that how what we have done is that uh, we have built a stack overflow forum a forum like stack overflow for all you people where you can come in log in and post your questions and i'll be you know uh, giving you or solving those questions for you and along with each of you everybody uh, all the people who whoever takes the course they can participate on that forum and you can solve each other queries by solving you will be understanding way way much and because you know we are a community of who are will be taking the same course we'll be knowing each other that what we want to understand what was taught today and based on that we'll be having a better understanding and better relationship with each other and we'll be able to solve each other problem and that will again under help us a lot because it's really uh, i've seen that pe people are not able to formulate a problem even asking a problem on stack overflow is a art so you have to be able to explain your problem what you did where you failed what was the error what all you tried you have to write that step by step this is also again an art this is how you have to express yourself only then you'll get the answers properly so for that we have devised a forum for you you can see this is a machine learning forum you people can log in and register and you can you know simply ask questions here right it's you know free for all for all these people will be taking the courses that is right so you'll be uh, given an id you can log in and you can post your questions and everything you can ask question you can click over here and ask question log in and register right now uh, okay i'll uh, i had two more slides but these are you know uh, some extra slides of based on are we living a simulation or not so i don't think that's necessary right now but uh, just give it a thought that are we really living in a simulation uh, this is this is a, there is a there was a paper published by nick bostrom after the movie matrix we all might have seen the movie matrix but the mathematical philosophical aspect of the movie matrix we never try to understand it it really relates with the philosophy mathematics and biology of ai and machine learning why i say biology ai and machine learning is an amalgamation of mathematics biology philosophy and what not you might have seen people from all field whether be it physicists uh, astronauts uh, astrobiologists biologists you know uh, pharma uh, people from pharma background uh, you know computer scientists ec background biotechnologists everybody has a thought or uh, for you know about machine learning has a as a uh, particular notion about machine learning because machine learning is uh, you know uh, it's not a field like you know civil engineering or uh, what there is a term you use for these uh, uh, these kind of engineering right 
but it's an amalgamation of all these things it's an amalgamation of physics it's an amalgamation of maths it's an amalgamation of biology that's what makes machine learning and ai very very interesting because there is new new amount of new new things coming up new things popping up every day and people from all these fields can contribute to ai so you don't have to worry that you are from biology and you cannot do anything in machine learning and ai you can because neural networks was devised based on the human brain how a human brain functions that is how a neural net network or the deep, which is the foundation of deep learning deep learning which is breaking records breaking the charts on all the forums all the uh, you know competitions it is based on how our human brain works which is biology right and there is physics again there is a physics aspects of machine learning there is a mathematical aspects also so you know you don't have to uh, feel scared because it's an interdisciplinary field everybody has to contribute so it the machine learning and ai will benefit really really much if people from ai diverse fields like you know biology for from from pharma from ec from computer science from iit or whatever background from agriculture if we collaborate together if we come up together then we'll be developing some really really good solutions we'll be accelerating the research in ai and machine learning really really fast so it's my call to each one of you whether you be from biology or pharma don't feel shy don't be afraid we really need you on board we really need people like you because you might who knows you might be you know creating some another algorithm some revolutionary algorithm like neural network someday in near future right that's it from me thank you uh, 